Hi there, my name is Kevin Freeman. Um, my fiance and I joined Renew Church in Milton about a year ago. Um, we're also part of Andrew and Ashton's uh, group. Um, I also went to high school with Andrew. We played high school volleyball together. Um, and this story today is about my, my younger brother, Jason. My name is Victoria and I am Jason's fiance. Jason and I met in middle school. Um, we got to know each other a little bit in high school, but he was quite shy. Um, Jason always stood out to me because he was quite goal-oriented, hardworking, dedicated. Um, and then later after high school, I kind of figured out that our positive attitudes match each other and our quirkiness worked well. Jason and I shared a room growing up for, you know, 18 years. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a very passionate, uh, goal-oriented individual, uh, very driven. Um, you know, when he sets his mind to something, he's he's uh, he's always trying to accomplish it, and uh, and it's just just a kind, strong, um, you know, mentally tough individual, and uh, you know, could could make really anyone laugh, and uh, and that's one of the qualities that I like, like most about him. And Jay's athleticism was very evident at a young age. You know, he started playing t-ball when he was four years old. Um, and it was clear that he was far beyond anyone else on his team, even at that age. Um, he spent most of his youth playing AAA Tigers uh, for Mississauga North. Um, and then later he transitioned to playing elite baseball for the Ontario Blue Jays. Had an opportunity to play down south. Um, got a scholarship to play at schools in Texas and Oklahoma. Um, completed his university degree down there. So baseball is really like kind of the initial spark between Jason and I. We both shared that common interest in middle school and high school, which kind of, yeah, sparked the fire, I guess. He would take me out to the field and make us practice double plays, him at short and me at second, and toss the ball all the time, work on my swing, make me better. Wiffle balls in the backyard. Yeah. And, yeah, hitting apples with plastic bats when he was a kid. And <laughs> You would visit him down south and I would visit him down south uh, playing ball. It was so cool to watch like that high level of competition. And then when he came home, I convinced him to join a softball league in Milton with our friends and we played rec. So quite the difference of competition level for him, but he obviously shined there. And yeah, like Victoria said, it was a lot of fun to watch him play, you know, at, at all stages of his life. Um, it, was, it was fun and it made me proud being his brother. So shortly after Jason's 25th birthday, um, you know, he was complaining on and off about a pain that he had in his side. Um, for us, we didn't really think that it was anything out of the ordinary. He was a very active individual, um, you know, constantly going to the gym and, and working on himself. And, and uh, you know, it started to get progressively worse. He ended up getting it checked out and it ended up being a, a tumor that had started in his chest. Um, it ended up being a type of, of germ cell cancer um, that typically starts in the testicles. Um, but for, for Jason, it started in his chest. Um, the prognosis from the beginning wasn't particularly great, but there was certainly opportunity to fight this disease. And from the very beginning, Jason was extremely motivated to, to take this on. He saw more of the challenge than anything else, and he was motivated to beat this thing. So very quickly after Jason got diagnosed with his germ cell cancer, he started his treatment at Princess Margaret, undergoing chemotherapy. Then after his chemo was done, he had a scheduled surgery at Toronto General Hospital. After that, the cancer did come back quite quickly, so his remission was short, and we did have to go to Indiana for a specialized treatment. He was in remission again, and then shortly after that, the cancer did come back. Um, once it came back for the third time, the prognosis was very poor didn't stop Jason from fighting every single day. There's not one day where he did not think that he was going to beat this. There is a quote that he said in a podcast I listened to recently, and he said, I'm different, I am going to beat this. Doesn't matter what the doctors say. So when, when Jay was going through his treatments, um, he had an app on his phone, a Bible app, and he was getting verses sent to his phone every single day. Um, some of those verses really stuck out to him and really resonated with him and helped keep him motivated through his, his fight with cancer. And what he would do is he would, those verses that really stuck out to him, he would take them and he would reference them on a whiteboard that he had in his room, you know, constantly going back to those verses and, you know, for motivation and strength. 
Um, one of the verses in particular that he put up there that, that really stood out to me is uh, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understandings, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Um, you know, that's one that really stuck out for Jay. You know, none of it really made sense to us and, or our family what he, what he was going through. Um, but to know that, that God is in control and, um, you know, to trust in the Lord. And, you know, I think that really gave us a lot of faith and, and strength going through it all and certainly helped Jay, uh, you know, right to the very end. Um, his faith in the Lord was strong. Um, and his faith, I think, is really what got him through all of this. If you saw Jason on the street, you wouldn't know he had cancer unless you saw he was bald. Um, he was still playing softball. He barely missed a softball game. Uh, he was always out, all, still hitting home runs, miraculously enough. He was motivated to, to continue doing the things that he loved, maintain his positive attitude, and he really didn't want this, this type of diagnosis to, to hold him back in any way. The last softball game he played was actually really special. That's where he proposed. So the whole team was there, a bunch of family was there too, and it was just really special. It sucked that it was his last game. We didn't expect that, but still special. So, so shortly after um, Jason and Victoria got engaged, um, his, his illness started to get a bit worse and um, started to wear on him a little bit. Um, he ended up going to, uh, to Indiana, um, you know, for some more specialized treatment. And, uh, you know, I, I remember there was a moment that we had before we left for Indiana. Um, it was with, with Andrew and my fiance and, and Jay. And, you know, we just said a prayer. Uh, Jay was quite desperate for direction. Um, he wanted to believe, continue to believe in God and have his faith drive him and, uh, and keep him positive. Um, you know, there were some, some times when he was struggling. And I remember just this, this conversation, this prayer that we had uh, with Andrew and, and uh, Jay just asked that, you know, if, if, if God can't work, work in his life um, to save, save him from this disease, that if, if there's any way in which he could use his life to, uh, you know, to help others that have been affected by this disease. Um, and that's, that in a way, um, you know, has really motivated us to, to keep this fight going for Jay. Um, even though he's not here to do it himself, we feel that, that we need to take it upon ourselves to do that. Um, it's very important and, and close to our heart. Um, it's just about a year ago now that, that Jay passed away and, uh, and we actually had a, you know, an, an opportunity to share this idea in, in, with him about having a softball tournament and you know, creative ways in which we can, we can raise money for cancer research and continue the fight. Uh, you know, Hopefully, we hope that it would be with him there, but with him not there, that we can still pick up where, where he left things off. Um, and that kind of inspired us for, for the tournament. I guess the first thing we tried to figure out was the name, so Cancer Crush Fest. When Jason was going through his treatment, we kind of used a hashtag crush cancer just because he would talk about crushing baseballs often. So crush came into mind. Um, and then I was looking back at a conversation Jason and I had, like old text messages. And I was talking about, we were throwing like a little mini going away party. And I think I called it like Crush Cancer or something like that. And then he messaged back, he's like, oh, you should have named it Crush Fest. So that's where I said, well, let's do that for the tournament. Like that's super cool. So our tournament ran at the end of August in Milton. Unfortunately, it was COVID time, so we couldn't have it as big as we wanted, but we had a great turnout. We had eight teams, which was our max that we could allow. All the funds that we raised um, went to a, a fund at the Princess Margaret Hospital where Jason got a lot of his, his treatment. Um, the fund supports testicular cancer research, um, and I think we were actually able to raise about $9,500 towards that fund. So, um, you know, super exciting for us. Um, Something for us, I think, that was very near and dear to our hearts, um, having the tournament. Um, for me per personally, um, you know, it, I felt very like it was very purposeful for us to be able to do something like that, that would support cancer research at the same time. You know, everyone's able to get together and have fun. Um, and it's, you know, it's for a good cause. It's something that we know Jason would certainly enjoy. Um, you know, we had a home run derby at the event. Uh, Jay's best friend Cooper actually won the home run derby, which was very special to watch. Um, everyone had a great time. It's something that we, we are hoping to do annually. Um, we want to make the tournament bigger and better every single year. Um, so we certainly encourage anyone that's watching this, if you're interested in joining, um, certainly let us know. We will be setting up the event probably around the same time for next year in August in Milton. 
we love seeing people come out and have a great time and um, like I said it's something that's very close to us and, and something that we hope to keep be able to keep doing.